Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I look literally insane. I don't care because this is just how I look and I have a child and you get the real me. <laughs> Taylor gathered some questions from Instagram stories. I yeah, think. I asked you guys to ask us questions and we shall answer them. How did your relationship change after having Malachi. It changed in a lot of ways. I mean, when our relationship really started heating up, <laughs> I definitely was prioritizing her um, just in every aspect of life. Like I was just always thinking about her and what she was doing or what she wanted to do or what was next. And as soon as he was conceived even, that focus switched to him. So that was probably the biggest change and a lot was affected by that. I feel like we've gotten tighter and grown closer and if that was even possible, our more developed. Our relationship has changed. We aren't in the front seat anymore of our relationship. It is about Malachi and it's about us working together. Of course, our whole relationship changed. We aren't the main focus of even our whole lives anymore. So I feel like it forces us to communicate properly. Make three meals a day. We have to, everything, if there's a problem in our relationship, then there's a problem with everything. Everything, so. And he's affected by that as well, so. It's almost made it easier in a way for us to be more selfless and allowed us to kind of put all that petty behind us. And I think both of us, like, our main focus is Malachi, and I feel like that makes us love each other, loving Malachi. And I think all of our energy goes to him, so I feel like we I leave some reserve energy for you. I don't know, I'm just saying, like... <sighs> when will you be getting married? I told her to take me to the courthouse whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, obviously, you know, everyone wants a big extra. I guess not everyone does, but we would like a big extravagant wedding. What? One of these days. But, you know, for now, tax purposes and such, just take, take me to the courthouse. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll write our names now and be done with it. Part of me wants a huge fairy tale wedding, like that wedding. Like that sounds like the most beautiful thing ever. But then when I actually think about it, and I think about my social anxiety, and I think about walking down an aisle. It doesn't even seem like it would ever happen with Corona and the travel ban and all the stuff that's happening. We have a kid together, we live together, we own a house together, we have been together since we were 17 years old. And you're the person I have spent the rest of my life with. So, I mean, whenever we get married, we get married. I feel like we're already married. So it's not like it's nothing to you. I mean, of course. Signing your life away forever. Saying goodbye to that single life that you had beforehand. It's just it's so easy for you. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's like the first time you have sex. Like, if you hype it up and, you know, expect this perfect experience, like, you're always gonna get let down. I feel the same way about an extravagant way to keep your expectations low and hopes high. Don't wear a pantsuit if we go to a courthouse. Would you guys ever adopt? I'd love to. It I, takes 10 years, doesn't it? It just all depends on the process. I would love to foster children, especially because I just feel like we have the ability to foster children. There's so many children in the system. Yeah. Right now, I don't think I'm ready because Valakai's still really young, but maybe when he gets around, like, four or five. I like to foster kids, and adoption is always on the table for us, so. We'll see. If you could change something in the world, what would it be? You would take every close-minded person I would and open them up. Bust them open with a freaking bag. I feel like that would naturally solve a lot of our problems as well. I would give everybody, I want everybody to sit in a room and have a real honest history lesson. I would just want to change the fact that we're decimating our planet, and the best way to do that is change the way that it's operating currently. You just gotta stop using non-reusable resources. It's definitely easier said than done, but if we can just shift that model a little bit, money is always gonna run everything. So if we can just make it to where, you know, money's still running the show, but we're not decimating the earth in that process, I, I will be a lot happier with, you know, with everything. And I will feel safer and better about future generations and our current one as well. So, and there's, you know, thousands of ways to fight this problem. Maybe just making everyone aware of this problem um, is probably what I wish or, or where I'd start. How do you help each other when it comes to mental health? I feel like anyone that's a part of our generation deals with some form of a mental health problem and you know how severe that is varies obviously. Personally, to stay sane, I just try to make sure I have as much real world experience as possible. And by real world experience, I just mean like taking some time where there isn't a screen directly in front of you and whether that's working on yourself or trying to build something with your hands or just kind of being as present as possible um it's definitely a practice that i've enjoyed lately and has helped keep me sane in the midst of all of this confusion and chaos so hopefully it helps you as well but i do that and smoke a little bit of weed being honest when i had my first panic attack i literally felt like i was dying 
crying and I was trying to deal with it myself because I really was trying to just understand what's going on in my body. But then it got to a point where I thought I was dying, so I woke Nash up and he was just there to ground me and just having somebody there to tell you that you aren't dying and everything's okay and just like just having another perspective is what Nash is for me and just like trying to make sure I know that I am safe. It's just as easy to, you know, trigger someone's mental health problems as it is to like alleviate them I feel we don't see from the same perspective all the time so there'll be you know instances where you know it's the it's the classic like oh just stop thinking like that or just stop feeling that way it's so much easier said than done and everyone operates differently and there's certain things that are or tendencies that are going to be easy for one person to break and impossible for another person to break so not every one thing is going to work for everybody yeah we just got to cater to each of us specifically we're more individualistic than that and it's important that we realize that and, and do that. I remember when I was having a bunch of panic attacks and Nash was trying to like bring me down one time and he's like really not dying but you just have to think about you that you're not dying you have to know that I went to a bunch of doctors and I really wasn't dying I just was in this constant cycle of thinking I was dying so it was just a bunch of panic attacks. It's definitely a severe case of hypochondria and I've had some myself as well it's just like anytime you, you doubt your overall health anytime you're skeptical about things that are, are important in your you know everyday life or your bodily functions, whatever it is, it's very easy to go on a downward spiral from there. Which is fine, it just takes patience and respect and you know, seeing from their perspective to help get them out of that place. At one point, nobody else had helped me, it was just me realizing that I was okay with myself. So I truly had to go inward and just break the cycle myself and that was the hardest thing to do because I truly thought I was going to die. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I couldn't function, I couldn't go throughout my days. After a month of doing something, you have a new habit. I'm here now. <laughs> and if I can do it, so can you. Make sure the biggest no-no in all of this is never tell someone how they feel. You don't understand exactly what they're going through, so just try your best to put yourself in their shoes, even if it's super painful and, and sad and drab. Like, sometimes that's what needs to be done. Some people don't have that person to just listen to them, so just being there to have somebody hear all your problems. We're becoming less and less present in today's day and age, so it's definitely an issue that's becoming more and more relevant. Why are you both not in the city anymore? Why are you in the country? Nash will move to a freaking the <laughs> no, middle no, of nowhere. No, just point to a map in the middle of nowhere and Nash will go thrive out there. Where I grew up, everyone had woods in their backyard and nature and like, you know, room to build forts and run around and stuff. And I just took it for granted growing up. And it's definitely something I missed when I moved to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's a slower pace. I feel a little more creative and free. Honestly, what it came down to was we'd rather commute to the city than commute to nature. We wanted to give him the opportunity uh, yeah, it's honestly about him. to he, blossom. He, he needed the space. What was your first impression when you met each other? Tell me. Damn, she bad. Obviously, I was taken aback by your physical appearance. Um, oh. When you're already physically attracted to someone, it makes it a lot easier to like him in every other way, so <laughs> that's kind of what started. When I first saw him, I thought he was really young because I thought, somebody told me his age was different than it was, so I just viewed him as a child. I mean, he, I thought he was like a cute, a cute boy, but nothing more than that. But then we started hanging out, I started to get to know him, and I was like, why did why I- Why did you start liking me? Because I liked you. Why? Because I liked who you were. Uh, we're gay. Because I, I, did, you, we just. We did have a. We did connect emotionally, pretty instantly. <laughs> do you guys ever argue? If so, how do you resolve it? We only really argue when there's something to do, and it's like whose responsibility is it to do this, or why do we have to do this, or who didn't do this, and then when it's done, it's resolved. Why are you looking at her ass? Yeah, there's no like, there's no actual disagreements or arguments. More just like constructive, which way is better, what's the best way to do this kind of arguments. You know? Who's the better cook? Do all the cooking, all the cleaning, trash, laundry, dishes, you name it. I'm not trying to take credit for it or anything, I just do it all. She's constantly feeding and raising a kid when I'm doing that stuff, so I'm not really complaining. I don't cook that. <laughs> <laughs> now that your parents, do you ever have date nights? We've never really been the date type. Hey, yeah, the babysitter, it's Corona time still. Like, why would we ever have a date night? The only time I get to spend with you is when he's napping or asleep. Okay, but so, no. our dates were going on trips and exploring the world together, so we haven't been able to do that because we've been in our house. 
And I mean, we spend all of our time together, and what we do enjoy doing is like going outside or doing activities, so we still get to do those. Our morning hikes are our dates, and we do those often. <laughs> For how long have you been together? Almost six años. That's a long time. I don't remember my life before you. <laughs> I really don't even remember it before my cat. Tips for first time cat owners. Cats are not dogs. They can be cuddly and they can be held even and they can travel even and be walked on a leash even, but they're just not dogs. Like they don't need us at all. They're not dependent on us. I forgot what the quote was. I think it's something like dogs think of us as like gods. Like we're their end all be all. Like they will obey us and love us forever unconditionally. And cats are smart enough to realize that like you know, they don't need us at all. Kind of they'll enjoy our company every once in a while, but there'll be moments where they don't want you around. And for the most part, I feel like they're like a hugely misunderstood animal. Um, there is a lot of trouble that comes with domesticated cats if they're outside. Like house cats will just kill for fun, basically, and completely interrupt the natural flow of things. So you gotta watch out for that. If your cat ever goes outside, just keep that in mind. Other than that, don't don't cut their claws off, please. Like it's one. It's like cutting a dog's tail off. Like it's all aesthetic at that point. With a cat, cutting off its claws is like cutting off your knuckles, for example. They need those claws for grip, to climb things, to move around, scratch themselves, clean themselves. Like they naturally will shed those claws. So I would say don't clip their claws. That's something that I've seen a lot of cat people do. Maybe it's because they have indoor cats and they don't want to get scratched or whatever. It's very easy to teach your cats not to use their claws when they're jumping on you or when they're laying with you. But like at the most, trim them. Don't just cut them off completely. Brush them Give out. Give them time. Yeah, I was gonna say brush, brush them out every once in a while. Don't just expect them to just like come to you and be like a dog. You have to give them time. You have to form a relationship. When I adopted my cat, they said that he was bad with other animals and that he is, was the worst cat and not to adopt him. And he is literally the best cat in the whole entire world because I let him into my home and I opened my arms for him and I let him have all the space and time he needed. Yeah, for like the first two weeks of his life, Kubrick, the first cat we adopted, he like, we never saw him. He just only came out at night to eat and he like lived under the dishwasher for literally two weeks. After he was comfortable with us and understood that we just wanted him to thrive and stuff, he completely opened up and, and transformed and yeah, he's quite literally like my favorite pet I've ever had. That's the biggest thing for me, it's like, if you're gonna get a pet, make sure you're taking it from a situation that's worse and, and making its life better. Don't ever take a pet and, and give it a worse life. What's your favorite thing about each other? There's just too many to answer. You make every everyone around you better, brighter, happier, more full of life, including myself, and I not only really enjoy that and appreciate that, but it's almost like necessary at this point. I just need that energy around, so. I have never <laughs> met. Oh God, you are so selfless and so just willing to listen and learn and give and do it without <laughs> without wanting anything in return. And different religions and I think everyone should. I took a religions class in school. My biggest thing when it comes to religion is like, please never condemn anyone else's religion. There's principles I agree with from every religion. I'm not gonna cancel one out. I'm not gonna say one's greater than the other or one's right and one's wrong or one's better than the other. I have enough common sense not to do that, but it's sad that there's you know large groups of people that don't. Moral of the story is we should all be open to learning in, in every situation. Anytime we're not open to learning, we're just being a bad person. Faith, religion, like th these are things that like it helps to keep an open mind for. Like you don't want <laughs> you don't want to have a closed-minded perspective on this stuff. There is actually a lot of connections between science and religion on a deeper scale, which is annoying because right now no one's listening to science and everyone's kind of blindly believing whatever they read on the internet. Instead of reading one post and like committing that to like that's you know what I believe and think now, we need to read like 30 posts and formulate our own opinion. If you haven't been doing that, I'd definitely advise that, that you start. Does Nash ever not support you when you post a revealing photo on Instagram? No. Well, some, a lot of people have problems with that in their relationship. I guess they do. I mean, as long as you're not actively trying to find yourself a new man's, 
post whatever you want. Like, I do not care. What has 2020 taught you guys? A lot, but mainly how disconnected we are and that there's a lot of room for us to grow and improve. And that optimism and hope is not only like important for us to keep at the front of our minds, but necessary for us to get better. We have to be hopeful. We have to believe that we can make the world a better place or it will never be better. Can a guy lose a sex drive after witnessing a woman give birth? How was your sex life after giving birth? Okay, after I gave birth, I was so scared to have sex for a while because my vagina just did not feel okay. But afterwards, honestly, focused on anything sexual kind of like was so crazy especially because we did the whole home birth thing and I felt like pretty involved in it I just was wrapped up in the moment so I wasn't even thinking about anything like that for a while but after you recovered a little bit and were ready I guess I was yeah, I was born ready so <laughs> you know men you know crave sex obviously and it's just one of those things where it's like it's not her responsibility to please me and it's not my responsibility to please her so don't demand or expect anything for me personally we had sex ed in school but they never taught us how to respect women and, and correctly give them their space or how, how to correctly pleasure them even and you look at the, the industry of lust and how you know lopsided it is and misogynistic it is and yeah i mean you wonder how that came to be and how it's continuing to be and it's, it blows my mind in conclusion uh who cares whether they lose or gain a sex drive that should be what's important in everyday life or in society and it's not your job to fulfill that especially in the midst of having a child bringing life onto the planet. It's like, y'all y'all did that, you know, nine months ago. Now we're worried about the next steps. While random horniness will continue to attack the male population for the rest of the time, it's extremely important that we take responsibility and learn how to control our sexual desires because until we do that, we're gonna be living in a pretty fucked up world. Will Malachi be homeschooled? I make this example all the time, but like an elephant and a monkey aren't gonna climb a, a tree the same. Why make everyone have the same credentials or why give everyone the same test to go through school when everyone is super individualistic and will naturally have a different way of approaching things and digesting things. People are going through different things at home. They're learning who they are as a person. Developing at different times. Education is just one of those things you can't put, put your finger on. There's thousands of different ways to be educated. We're still not even sure how exactly we develop and learn. Like that's a new thing. I certainly have my problems with the school system. I'm not saying I'm like a skeptic of it or anything. I feel like it, you know, does more good than bad. You learn a lot socially in school. We should want to learn and the mindset we need to adopt is like, I know one thing and that's that I know nothing at all. And if we can have more people that instead of being ignorant, I know it all are open-minded, like let me learn. Everyone has something to offer. You know, if we can keep that mindset and adopt that, I think we'll be light years ahead of where we are in 2020. So yeah, I believe in education, but I also believe that it's, you have to want to be educated. You have to want to learn. This whole idea that kids don't want to learn or kids don't like school, it's it's so ass backwards to me because if you've ever talked to a kid, their, their head is full of questions. They're just about to explode with things, a curiosity that, that they need to fill. And you make that seem like that's not there and that, you know, they're just these zombies going to school that just sit on their phones all day and jewel or whatever it is. I do feel like there's a certain amount of neglect in the United States educational system, which is the only one I've experienced. And yeah, I don't know, it makes for some unfair advantages here and there, which I hate. So there's a lot of problems with education. And there's a lot of problems that are affected by education. And ultimately, if we can boost our education, a lot of these problems can go away. So I'm all for any form of education if you're learning and growing and healthy doing. So it's not very helpful. It's one of those things where I don't see it like stopping when he gets out of school. It's like we're constantly going to be growing and learning, and I want to implement that in as many different ways as possible, so that it's not just like you know, here's how you are supposed to learn. If you can't learn this way, you know, you're stupid. I feel like that's kind of what we've done. I think in our us, system. we're gonna take it day by day. I think we're gonna start by homeschooling him as a, at a younger age, especially now with Corona, who knows how the world is gonna be. There's just so many different ways to be educated now. We shouldn't be shaming one or the other. What are the differences in the ways you guys parent Mount Kai? If she sees me doing something I'm not gonna say wrong, but if she sees me doing something that's like in question, and I see her doing something in question, we'll constructively criticize and end up with like the best solution and, and do whatever that is. So it's, it's more like coming together and figuring out 
how to parent better as opposed to like, oh, you you do this worse than me or you do this better than me. Like, obviously, you'll be able to put them to sleep better. You can feed them to sleep. And then obviously, you know, I can hike up a mountain with him faster. He's, <laughs> he's going to want to be on my shoulders for that. Like there's, it's just, you know, we both want what's best for him. So we kind of collaborate and make sure we get to that point. Collab. That's all parenting is. It's just a, a good collab. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe below for more videos.